BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 141, Anti-Aging Medicine and the Doctors Who Practice It. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Hello and welcome back. We are talking this week about a range of things that we touched on before, and one of those things is uh, Kathy's concern, often repeated, about who specializes in this area as a physician, this area of medicine that she specializes in as a physician. It's not the gynecologist, uh, because they primarily treat women of fertile ages, and it's not the endocrinologist, because they really uh, specialize in, in smaller and smaller group populations. And so when you come to an aging population of both men and women, who knows the information that they need to know to help them make decisions about hormone replacement therapy? And so it's what not we, gerontology either. It's not gerontology Gerontology either. is just a matter of dealing with palliative care, basically. How do we keep you alive? Mm -hmm. It's not preventive. It's not replacement. It's just basically, oh, you know, you're 70, and so how do we just keep you breathing and going and, and somewhat healthy, Okay. but it's not preventive. So, so we're looking for preventive hormonal treat, treatments and evaluations. And that improve the quality of life. Right. And, and so one of the criticisms that gets made by researchers and, and people that write on these topics, mostly, and the information we're going to be using today comes from the Endocrine Today Journal, which is the primary journal for endocrinologists uh, to read. and in a couple of the articles that we're going to be referencing, they are talking pretty negatively about the new specialty of anti-aging medicine. It's a bad name, it, but there is a new specialty, and that's one of that's now the specialty that filled in that gap mm -hmm. that deals with preventive medicine and deals with replacement of testosterone, estrogen, growth hormone if necessary, and balancing hormones to give you a better quality of life. But the name's bad, so they. The name is bad. Because you're and not it, really anti-aging. You're just. It allows somebody with a straight aging. face to say anti-aging medicine and, really? and sneer all over it, like yeah. they're all crooks, quacks, and charlatans. And yet, you can be board certified yeah. in the specialty of anti-aging mm -hmm. medicine, and it ranges across a gamut of fields that that stick their toe in each of these specialties, mm -hmm. but who primarily focus on looking at individual patients, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so. In the articles in Endocrine, uh, Endocrinology Today, uh, or Endocrine their, Today. Endocrine Today is their newspaper. M May they have of 2013. They have a journal that is this thick the every month, which is Endocrinology and Metabolism. Okay. So that's a different journal. But they have three different journals, really, yeah. and this. Right. But this is kind of like the snapshot of what is in the other journals. So in the articles in, th in this newspaper, the doctors who are writing them are talking about anti-aging medicine around the question of hormone replacement therapy for men and for women. And, and it's interesting to read them because there are some, some pro and con uh, in, in one of the articles. One doctor says, well, we don't have a large enough database. This is a new enough era uh, that, that we don't have the volume of research that's conclusive that we need to amass. But we're beginning to acquire some information, which is really intriguing to look at. And so then he, this doctor goes through and says on the plus side and on the minus side and the benefits and the risks and so on. And, and he's, he's just basically describing the current state of affairs uh, regarding the debate around hormone replacement therapy. However, he's not accurate because there are tons of articles. If, if ever a doctor or a, someone who's, trying to ta who's taking care of you says there is no research, your antenna should go up because there's usually a little bit of research on everything. And if they say there is no research, which is what this physician said on the front page of this, of this magazine, I went, okay, I'm reading this, I'm reading this because that is false. You have a lot of research listed on your website mm -hmm. from a variety of uh, journals and sources and, mm -hmm. and research institutions. That are all actually medical articles and they're written mostly in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, which, which is this guy's journal. journal. Yeah. You know, it's like OBGYNs read mm -hmm. 
the Amer ACOG well, Journal. But you know, in, in terms of talking about research, and you know, one of the, one of the oldest saws in education mm -hmm. is that when you look at research and you look at statistics, you should always be wary and and qualify who did the research and what was their point of view because mm -hmm. statistics don't lie, but they can be massaged, mm -hmm. and and you increase or decrease the base of comparison to make a number look significant or to make it look insignificant. Right. The number is still accurate. But you make it look like, oh, wow, or oh, yeah. It's kind of like appraisers. What do you yeah. want it to be worth? Yeah, what do, what you, do know, you need this yeah, to be what worth? Do, yeah, what do you want it to be worth? It's kind of like, I mean, you can mm -hmm. make studies look a certain way exactly. if you construct them. However, just pretend that is that all studies are honest. Well, yes. The problem but, is these guys, they're endocrinologists, aren't treating patients with testosterone and estrogen. They're doing diabetes, thyroid, adrenal, and exactly. pituitary. So, so that's what and I was going to say. they have research, but they don't do the In, in the job. research, they talk about hormones right? As, as a global group. And you are focused on primarily the sex hormones, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the aging cascade hormones mm -hmm. of testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Mm -hmm. And if you don't break the research down into those components, you don't get data for those issues. That's right. And his... his um, castigation of hormone treatment. Well, he's mm -hmm. a hormone doctor. That's all endocrinology means is that he treats or or treats diseases caused or by hormones. The full gamut of hormones, not all just. All the hormones in your body, which are many. Right. But he uses that term as the estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, and maybe mm -hmm. growth hormone as well in that article. So, yes. So a lot of this is just shooting from the hip. Well, actually, most of the article talks about growth hormone. It mm -hmm. does get to testosterone replacement for men who are elderly, men who are 70 and beyond. And what he says, interestingly enough, uh, is that there is data now that indicates elderly men who received testosterone replacement who have uh, previously identified deficits. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're already suffering from a cardio problem or a bone uh, strength problem or... Uh, yeah. The problem there is they wait for somebody to get sick before they treat them instead of trying to prevent it. And then they say, okay, so then if you replace the testosterone for these gentlemen, you can find improvement. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what that means long term. And we don't know what that means for men who start to develop these needs in their 40s and in their but 50s. But there are tons of articles on that as well. well and, and, and so I guess what we're trying to say is this is what doctors read. Mm -hmm. And, and they have no reason not to believe what someone who is a teacher at a medical school is telling them is not right. But when you dissect it and you know anything about this subject, you realize that this guy doesn't practice sex hormone replacement and is writing about a whole different uh, specialty. Okay, so this article <laughs> then says, uh, as a, uh, a qualifying statement, that they are being critical, deliberately critical, of mass marketing of hormone sales, like all the testosterone ads that you see where you can send away for a free 30-day supply. But you can't get testosterone free over the well, internet. It's illegal. Well, what do they call it? It's an andro... Nothing and that's really testosterone. That What those are, those are all um, herbals. So he's he's talking about them, but that doesn't really exist because it's a controlled substance. It would be like, oh, I can send away for heroin. I mean, that's a controlled substance. You right, don't send right. away for that. Well, but he's making the qualified statement that specific doctors who treat specific patients mm -hmm. that they have a relationship with and know the medical history like of. Like I do. And, and then make an intervention of a replacement for that particular individual. Mm -hmm. They have data that they respect and that they, they say is good and, and is useful. So part of the message is go to a physician that is informed on these things and treats you as an individual patient, which is what, what you do. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to the story you were telling me before we began today that I'd like for you to share with our audience about the female that you saw in the last week who had gone to an endocrinologist uh, because she had looked at all the research on your mm -hmm. website and she wanted to sort of qualify herself. She already saw him for her thyroid. Okay. And so, and I, and I know this gentleman, and she already saw him for the thyroid, and actually her thyroid was managed beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I don't usually find that. I usually find that endocrinologists use a very low dose, and people don't feel well, but in the areas of thyroid, she felt fine. Yeah. And he had done a good job at that. But when she asked him about me, oh, she's crazy is what he said. <laughs> she's crazy. And she said, what? And he said, yeah, you know, she, 
people come back with facial hair. I'm like, she said facial hair? I have seven or eight different symptoms mm -hmm. I need to get fixed. Mm -hmm. I, and you can't fix them for me. Right. So facial hair is nothing compared to fixing those. Right. And so he, he also complained that some women had enlarged clitorises. But that doesn't cause a disease. That's not a problem, and it's usually temporary. So usually... You mean like for the first few weeks or months like that you're the on the treatment? It's like the first four months, and usually and then it subsides. That, However, he, he acted like that was going to cause death. Mm -hmm. And in, in general, it's not an issue for my patients. Mm -hmm. So those things that he did not really understand, and the things were very minor that made him call me crazy. Well, but he calling you crazy say, is nicer than calling you a quack. Right. I mean... He's, he's, he's walking along. I asked my psychiatrist, and I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay. You have documented proof. I've documented yeah. proof. The rest yeah. of us, we don't know. Yeah. So, so <laughs> then she said to him, well, what about my symptoms? You know, if, if I don't go to Dr. Maupin and get this treatment for these symptoms, what will you do about my symptoms? He said, what, you're, she was for, she's 49. You're just getting old. And no, 47. You're just getting old. And yeah. you're just going to have to live with it. And we're not going to do anything And we're not doing anything about it. So all the symptoms of testosterone deficiency, which is what she had, right. and too much estrogen, estrogen dominance, mm -hmm. he thought was just normal aging. It may be going along with aging, but there is a cause for it, and there is a reason and a, to treat it, because you could treat all of those symptoms with one hormone, yeah. which is what I did. She said, you know, when he said that, I, I determined to come see you, because I, she said, it sounded so, like a terrible argument, and he was acting very arrogant about it. She said, that made me want to come see you more. Mm -hmm. She said, and I want my symptoms fixed. Mm -hmm. So um, she, she, was, she was delightful, but at least she told me what they're saying about me. <laughs> and you know what? You get, have to get a thick skin. Yeah. When you do something that is, you are absolutely sure is needed and is absolutely, every day people come in and say, oh, thank you. I, my life is right. back. Right. And I have lost six, seven symptoms I normally would have had to take six or seven drugs yeah. for, yeah. and now I'm just coming here and getting testosterone, they are, they are so happy. And there's no way to show the doctors that say, oh, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. these, all of these people, I mean, on a daily basis, I bet they don't have that. I mean, your doctor should ask you, how did my treatment make you feel? Not look at your lab and go, oh, your lab's good. Mm -hmm. you, should, you, know, you, you must feel fine and then go on. So they should ask you how you feel. So the lab matters, and they should read the lab. Right. But they but, should also talk to you. But the problem is, they, in general, we've been rushing through things because of insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of in a no-win situation. And the one thing we cut out is, oh, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, because the answer might be too long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's, so that's an issue. But my issue is always, how do you feel first? Right. Then let's look at the lab and follow it for maintenance of whatever hormone we're replacing. Mm -hmm. But like in thyroid, sometimes the lab looks great. Right. And, <clears throat> and every thyroid symptom of hypothyroidism is there. They're, they're, they have a goiter, their hair's falling out, you know, they've right. gained weight, they're swollen, they can't get their rings off, they have constipation. They all are still there. So heck with the lab work, right. you can go above. If you don't get side effects, you can increase the dose until they feel better. Right. And I usually follow something ridiculous like basal body temperatures. And that tells you whether you've got enough thyroid or not. Sometimes the lab doesn't equal. Because your body temperature has to be at a certain point for that thyroid to work. No, the thyroid makes your body temperature rise above 98. So if okay. I give you enough thyroid, mm -hmm. your body temperature first thing in the morning will be 98 or above. Mm -hmm. And if, if your lab doesn't look good, but your temperature's 98, not mm -hmm. 98 yet, then I increase dose. Right. The only, the only catch is that you can get some fast heart rates. So this is, that's about thyroid. That's, that's something that both endocrinologists and people who are in preventive hormonal practices do. Mm -hmm. But I just have a different view on it, and many of us do, that... Mm -hmm do anti-aging, the bad, the bad name for the good practice. Well, exactly. Because again, the, the, the whole philosophy of the anti-aging medicine is quality of life and mm -hmm. healthy aging or positive aging. Mm -hmm. Not just existing until you die, because after 49, you're too old to worry about. I mean, yeah. that's not even... <laughs> well, I, I just started living at 49. <laughs> and, and nobody's out there promoting a message that says anti-aging means you won't get any older uh, in terms of, of deteriorating age. You'll just have live a quality forever. of life 
Yeah. It, it may not give you an extra day of your life, mm -hmm. but you'll you'll have a quality life and you'll have fewer diseases and and mm -hmm. if you if you replace the hormones that are missing, fewer diseases, fewer symptoms, fewer things that keep you from living uh, uh, independently and living fully to enjoy your family. Yeah. So that's that's what, what we're trying to do. And I don't I've criticized areas of medicine which I think is just a function of how medicine divided up mm -hmm. the interests and 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 they divided endocrinology and OBGYN into sex hormones and the others. Right. When the research isn't done in the OBGYN side, it's done over in the endocrine side. So it's a mismatch. Well, and that's really not the problem or or fault of the endocrine doctors. These doctors are saying in this article that the research for women is concentrated <laughs> primarily on estrogen. Right. And then they go back to the Women's Health Initiative as, as a reference point. And they point. don't even recognize that the Women's Health Initiative was wrong. They don't articulate all, that in no. this article. And no. even the Endocrine Society or the Endocrine Society has said that they've retracted their views about estrogen replacement because mm -hmm. it, that study was wrong. Yeah. So, but then they don't talk about testosterone and For women. women at all. And part of their message is there's not, enough, there's not research done out there. And binders of research. <laughs> and your response would found, be, I have binders yeah, of research. Yeah, Medline, Medline articles, you just have mm -hmm. to Medline it or have your, if you're a physician, you can go to the medical library and have the librarian Medline it for you and give you a huge printout. So testosterone for women has been researched. There's data there. You can find it on Kathy's website, Dr. Kathy Moppin, MD, or biobalancehealth.com. Uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. And you can look it up. You can pull it off and take it to your physician. So are you mm -hmm. aware of this? The other thing is testosterone replacement for men. And, and in the article, a criticism is made about we don't have a long enough period of information for replacing this drug in men or this hormone in men to have the data that we need to have. And we are to worried say about... To it's safe from prostate cancer. To, that's where we're that's going. That's right. So, so we're worried about the side effects. And one of the adverse side effects can be a slightly enlarged prostate. And so that sets off an alarm because one of the markers for oncoming prostate cancer is a slightly enlarged prostate. So then they really start checking and monitoring and, and checking your antigens and your PSA antigens and so on mm -hmm. uh, and saying, well, as you get older, we have to track this more carefully because we don't want you to have prostate cancer. Uh, they, actually, they say that it causes prostate cancer, testosterone. That, that's been the that's common the belief. That's the implication. And that, that's the implication in the article. That it's a causation not a correlation. Mm -hmm. And so then we have a, an article, uh, a life extension update from May, uh, I'm sorry, June 4th, 2013, at the American Urological Association's meeting in San Diego, where research uh, doctors from Baylor University have done a study on 786 men mm -hmm. over an extended period of time. They follow age courts, mm -hmm. uh, cohorts, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, and they conclude specifically that replacing testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. That's right. And that's what so we've been... That's hot off the press. Yeah. That's this month. Yeah, that's what we've been, we've been saying in our previous podcasts because mm -hmm. we've had articles that have said that but not quite so definitively. Specifically and definitively. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, you pay your money and you take your choice. <laughs> our, our argument to you is do the work yourself. Don't just buy the mass consumption message. Don't just buy the dismissive message to the doctor that says, well, you're just getting older. That's what happens. Then you'll die. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll be miserable and unhappy, and then you'll die. But yeah. you could be have a full life. But what we do agree with in the research and in the articles and, and the message that they're giving is go to a physician, have a personal relationship with a physician who knows you and knows your personal and unique health information. Mm -hmm. Don't do one of these mass consumption, internet related, global Clinics. clinic mm -hmm. things. Uh, go to a doctor that knows you, that will take the time to know you and access your information and prescribe a treatment plan that's tailored to your needs. That's absolutely essential and, and you can find that. Thank you very much. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963.
You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.